Photography Daily. It's a new week. Welcome along. This week, an aviation photographer, a news shooter in a, well, literal political fight, the gentle giant of architecture, and a portrait photographer who believes he can really reveal a soul within a photograph. We start, though, with Laird Kay, a photographer who almost by accident has become the world's favourite airliner photographer to take some inspiration from a particular British Airways campaign. All on the back of a word you're about to meet flying in two directions, geeking. I think do what you love and and follow that uh, and it will show through your photos. And it's the likes of platforms such as Instagram that has very much helped, if you'll forgive the pun, this whole project to take off. Social media has been a great marketing tool for me because um, a lot of people who work in the aviation industry, um, in head office and headquarters, essentially, they're all plane geeks. And it's not just pictures of planes. It's not just simple shots out of windows at 39,000 feet. Laird photographs these machines as if they're an art installation. What I try to, to show are the details that most passengers don't get to see, like the, the pattern of the rivets the kind of the wings exposed the parts that you see them and you realize okay this is essentially a handmade beautifully crafted piece of machinery it's a sculpture laird k on the show today well 12 days into the month couple of things before we start i'm always fascinated by personal projects that i read about and of course see and that that you tell me about too and i have a discussion coming up on a mental health photography project made by a british photographer alex benyon who's, to quote a little of his web bio, own mental health journey began in his early 20s when he was diagnosed with clinical depression and anxiety. He took up photography as a creative outlet and an alternative way of dealing with depression and immediately fell in love with it. He says it taught him to see the world differently and to find the beauty and humanity in life around him, which I would imagine for many people right now in this new world of mixed messaging and challenging times both personally and commercially is a a literal retreat. I've personally found this podcast to be that and the photo walk editions that I lead on a Friday to be an extension of that. And I want to give him a mention today though as at 10.30 UK time he's hosting a Facebook live presentation on his Portraits of Mental Health project sharing inspirational stories and portraying the real people behind the labels. I realise that a lot of people actually download the show maybe sometimes a week after and that listeners in different time zones will miss this today due to time differences. But the web link is on the show page today, just in case, at photographydaily.show. Look for today's episode, Do What You Love, and you'll find it there. Just though as an additional note, and probably apt for the title of today's show, Alex is now a professional photographer himself, doing what he loves. And he's a Sony Alpha creator. If you missed the talk, he'll be on the show soon here to talk about his project, mental health and his photographic experiences. Today's show is kindly supported by MPB, trading thousands of cameras and lenses every week across Europe and the US. MPB.com, they check, they grade, they photograph every single item. And then, as we've said before, add a six-month warranty so you can be sure of what's in the box. So if you're thinking about uh, trading gear right now, buying and selling, then go to mpb.com. They operate out of Brighton, Brooklyn and Berlin, all the Bs. So you've got two sizable markets of the world covered, Europe and America. And who knows where next, I guess. And talking of the world, Laird Kay is a photographer who, as you'll hear by today's photo story, went from one life to another because he had a very real-life fascination in something. Sounds simple enough, I know, but as you'll hear, today's conversation is not so much tech, but more about the emotion of having a pure and absolute interest or even devotion to something you love and turning that into your photographic outlet. A quote from your bio to start with. I'm the hashtag AV geek you see hanging around airport runways, camera at the ready, waiting for the perfect shot. I've worked with airlines and airports around the globe to showcase their brand and tell their story through my lens for commercial campaigns and editorial work. It's not exactly the regular photographic job if you think of, say, editorial, social or news, Laird, is it? It's a, it's a, a kind of a niche within a niche within a niche almost. But how on, yeah. earth, how on earth did you get into it? Um, it was a, a roundabout way. I trained as a designer. So I worked 12 years as a designer uh, building wine cellars, which is another niche 
job. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I thought, okay, I need a bit of a change. So I'd always loved photography. So I thought, oh, I'll start taking photos of things that I love. So I started taking shots of interiors and started taking pictures of planes, thinking that with my design background, I'd probably get into more doing interior photography. But it happened that, you know, about a year afterwards, I get an email from Lufthansa saying, we love your work. Would you like to do a shoot with us? Was that um, was that out of the blue or had you contacted them? Totally out of the blue. Wow. Yeah, they had seen my work online and they liked my my angles and, and whatnot, my details. Um, and that was the start of it. So, yeah, aviation photography it is. Yeah, I mean, because when I – you do have other sides to your work. As you said, you've got the, um, you've got the interior shooting, which I believe some of, some of this sort of supports what you do, but your, your real passion is, is, the, um, is, the, is the aviation photography, isn't it? Correct, yeah. yeah. The aviation is, is the principle, but I also do you know, industrial photography, yeah. uh, interiors. Yeah. some product shots as well but it's mostly mostly aviation it, it's a tricky time in aviation right now and, and actually just before we uh, press the big run, red button for for record um we were talking about the demise of the 747 which is really sad and that that of course has been sped up i suppose by covid hasn't it it is sad because you know that plane has really brought the world together mm. like when it was first designed and launched it started global travel. It made the world accessible to people for travel. Um, and it leaves a great legacy uh, for people exploring the world. Some great memories. Everyone has a memory of, of seeing 747 or even being on a 747. Mm. Um, and it's just that iconic design with the, the front hump. And it's just, yeah, it is sad to see them go. Yeah. They will be missed. But with regard to this, this period in, in our sort of pandemic history, if you like, uh, I speak to a lot of photographers who, who have clearly been affected by this in some way, shape, or form. Less so in the news telling uh, genre, of course. But what, what about your uh, what about your business? How have you been affected, Led? Before it happened, I had lots of shoots planned all over the globe, um, and then it it hit. Borders were shut, and that's kind of and locked up. Um, I'm still keeping in touch with all my contacts and clients, um, and you know, of course, people will still need photos of planes. So once things get back in the air uh, and things get back to some sense of normalcy um, there will still be a need for pictures of planes which which makes me happy yeah so it started with Lufthansa and then how does it start to pan out after that uh, well it started with Lufthansa and then you know other airlines saw me um, social media has been a great marketing tool for me because um, a lot of people who work in the aviation industry, um, in head office and headquarters, essentially, they're all plane geeks. They wanted to work at the airlines because they're plane geeks. And I get a lot of followers who are plane geeks. So a lot of people who work in the industry see my work uh, online and, and contact me through there. So I've done also work with Air Canada, uh, Tap Portugal, Air France. Yeah. Um, before the pandemic, uh, I was in Georgia at the Gulfstream facility. Uh, and I was incredibly lucky because I was the first outside photographer that they'd allowed to photograph the assembly line wow. and how these Gulfstream private jets, ultra luxury private jets are yeah. made. And it was fascinating because it was such a, a clean and clinical space. Uh, and the lighting was, was like studio lighting because mm. everything had to be made so perfectly. Planes are built essentially on a single rail and then they go from stage to stage of construction on this single rail and it's everything is just so exact and yeah. so clinical. It's like a giant laboratory. It was fantastic. Well, you, you just reminded me actually there's there's a lot of access required for making these pictures as you say with Gulfstream. Um, you were on board, you were airside. I, I noticed you were also in the Boeing factory. There must be a fair degree of winning trust in this game because some of these things that you see behind the scenes are, are absolute secrets between designers mm -hmm. aren't they and airbus wouldn't want boeing to see what they do boeing wouldn't want airbus to so are you signing sort of your life away with ndas mostly there's a lot of paperwork there's a lot of um passing of security um tests so for example when i did the the shoot with this past year a commercial shoot for lufthansa we were doing the shoot at both Frankfurt and Munich airport. And so I had to take the uh, airport safety test that all airport employees have to have to take. Um, and you know, your computer exam that takes an hour, 
you go through that and and if you pass it then you get your your access pass so there's also that but there's also logistical issues because these are planes this is a business yeah. um and airlines make money when the planes are in the air so when they're on the ground and being photographed they're really not doing their job uh so trying to coordinate times to photograph the plane mm. uh, is quite difficult um and you they may say okay things changed the last minute mm. so they say sorry we've just had to change airplanes so this plane is is leaving us in in two hours you've only got two hours left to photograph and you kind of ah, rip your hair out and, and try to get as many shots as you can and you just you just hope for it the fun part as well is when you have these giant planes for a full day is having the power as the photographer which is, is, is quite amazing um, to say, you know what? I need that plane turned around. So for better lighting. Uh, and so w- for the Lufthansa shoot, I was able to, you know, at, at noon, we, the light changed. So watching them kind of call the, uh, call the crew to hook up the tug, flip the plane around. It was, it was quite a, quite a thrill. And, and do you have access to go wherever you like within the aircraft? You know, you can go in the hold, in the cabins, in the, wherever you want. Yeah. Typically, you know, if depends what the client wants. Mm. Um, but yeah, if, if there's, there's also, you know, sometimes they say no, no cockpit photos, which yeah, is fine. Yeah. Um, sometimes they say yes. Uh, it all just depends on, on what the client wants. What, what are the technical, um, issues with, I mean, you mentioned cockpit photos. Um, the, I mean, the lighting differences between what's what's going on outside and going inside can uh, going on inside can be quite extreme, can't they? How, how do you mm-hmm. how do you cope with that? How do you how do you light your shots on board? Uh, lighting shots on board, I've just done. Um, if they're in the hangar, then it's all just ambient hangar light and, and shoot with plates. So if it's outside, it's also just using ambient light um, from there. I've done a few shots where they wanted the, like the single glamour shot uh, and that's when you have to kind of get the the base of lights through the windows right um, so that's that's a bit more involved what so sort you're of, building a, and what sort of lights are coming through those windows we t- we're talking strobes yeah 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 uh and so they're um yeah so you just build a essentially a wall through of, of windows wow. or a wall of lights that go through the windows and gives you that that constant constant light how many lights oh it takes a lot right yeah. So we could yeah. be putting sort of 10, 12 down each side. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Many of the pictures are, are, uh, that I really love, Laird, of yours, are the, the very, very arty ones where you, you take the airframe like a wing perhaps uh, and create – well, they look like animal pictures, some of these. I don't know whether that's been said before, but, um, such as the tailplane picture. There's some virgin ones that are great. There's some other ones as well, which which to me look, look like the rise of a whale's fin. Mm-hmm. Do do clients now hire you for that kind of approach in that they haven't seen anybody else photograph an aircraft that way? I think that's why clients come to me is because they want photos of the plane. Uh, they want the, the beauty of the plane showcased. Um, there's lots of people who t- photograph the travel experience, uh, and that's certainly something people do. But I, what I photograph is the beauty of the plane, the beauty of the machine. I guess nowadays it's probably a bit controversial to say that I think be- machines are beautiful. There is grace and elegance in machines. Mm. Um, and so what I try to, to show are the details that most passengers don't get to see, like the, the pattern of the rivets, the kind of the wings exposed, the parts that you see them and you realize, okay, this is essentially a handmade, beautifully crafted piece mm. of machinery. It's a mm. sculpture. And that's how I that's how I shoot my uh, my images. Yeah. How much of your time is actually in the air, Led? I, I would assume there's um, there's obviously as you've said there's an awful lot of travel time involved. But you're not really photographing. You're not you're not there to be a reportage photographer while you're traveling from from A to B, are you? No, it's just you know you fly to a destination and then you photograph. Uh, yeah, if I can get some great shots uh, through the the window, that's fantastic. Uh, the first shoot that I did with uh, with Lufthansa was the delivery flight of the uh, Yankee Tango 747 retro livery plane, right. which was quite fantastic. And there you, I was doing photos of the plane during flight. Mm. Um, what was fantastic was that the um, it was only business and first that had seats that had been installed. So the entire economy cabin, the back of the plane, there were no seats. It was wide open. What? Um, and so you get some amazing shots of the banks of windows 
with this beautiful sunset beyond photos that you would never get ever mm -hmm. because you would never see get access to a plane an empty plane with no seats unobstructed views like that and now airports um this is part of your, your job, which for me is, uh, well, for me, it would be a people watching dream. For yours, it's not so much. It's wide open spaces. And it goes right back to your architectural roots, this, doesn't it, really? Because that, that's what happens when, when you go. I mean, there's more design in your work than the capture of people within these places. Or, or do you photograph any of the documentary nature of, of airports, too? Uh, I mainly photograph the the architecture and the space. Um, that's what I want to highlight because every airport wants to show off their sense of place, yeah. their how they're unique. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I like to show off is, okay, the, the gangways approaching Heathrow look like this or... Yeah. Yeah, it's just the interesting architectural space as it relates to the the aircraft and the tarmac and, and how people can see that space, yeah. Because so much time and effort has gone into redesigning airports of late. I mean, I, I don't know whether you've ever been to Oslo Airport in Norway, but it's an absolutely gorgeous airport in the way that it's been redesigned, the woodworking that's been done, everything mm -hmm. about it doesn't even feel like an airport now. It feels like a luxury boutique hotel, some of it. I've not been there yet. Now I've got that, it's now on my list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I, that's what I think is, is fantastic is, you know, you, you land at this new city and you immediately get this, you know, a sense of place, this understanding of what the city will be like through its architecture, through the language of details yeah. within the space. Um, Zurich Airport is is a fantastic airport for that because everything is so ordered and clean and crisp and it's just so so very Swiss. That's the Swiss for you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How good are you with the airport codes, the three letter identifier codes? Because on your website, under the airports, the sub menus, they're all in code, just the three letter codes. Yeah. There are, there are about eleven thousand. I did some research on it. There are eleven thousand in the world, so I wouldn't expect even even for a super aircraft geek like yourself for you to know some of the downtown sort of uh, out the way american ones in in kansas or whatever but mm -hmm. but i've got let me throw some at you this one's easy because it's on your website but you can tell me a bit about the airport ory that's paris orly yeah uh and it's a beautiful old uh designed mid-century modern airport uh that they've renovated it's a beautiful airport there's gorgeous mid-century details uh in that in the space um, oh, I'm trying to think of the. There's a French movie, Jacques Tati's Playtime, right? That features uh, Orly, and it's just a, it's a gorgeous showcase of what an airline was seen to be in the future, uh, and it's just kind of a this airport stands still as this kind of vision of what the future could look like. Now, this one fascinated me because this one goes to the and it's on your website as well. Um, THF. Oh, Tempelhof. Yes, yes in that, Berlin. That's closed down now, isn't it? It's closed down as an airport, but there you can take tours of the yeah. interior space and the actual runway area is a park. Yeah, I saw so people yeah, cycling across it. It's so cool to rent a bike and bike to the <laughs> runway. It's you know the, the weirdest experience, but you just got to do it. Is the runway still down then? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So everything all the all the tarmac is there and you can the paint paint marks are still there. Yeah. So you can bike really fast. Yeah. <laughs> the, these are easy. I've just got a couple more for you. Uh, LAX, obviously you would know that that one. Yeah, so Los Angeles. Yeah. Great airport. Yeah. Is that one of the biggest in the world, I think, isn't it, LAX? One of them, yeah. yeah. It's, they are, they've got some great opportunities there for doing helicopter photography. So you can rent a helicopter for an hour yeah. and then take it buzzes over the airport and you can take aerial shots, which mm. is really, really fun. Here's a tricky one. I just want to end on, on a tricky one for you. BGI. Oh, uh, um, BGI. If you get this, I'll be very impressed. Is that um, Barbados? I so wanted you to got, get it, and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd catch you out with it. I thought, well, I can't make it too difficult, but let's give him one right out the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you flown there on holiday or something, or is it just just your your you you really are that good with these three letter identifiers? I remember seeing some um, images of the Concorde right. landing there. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, um, I, I, I mean, Concorde obviously was before the time you were photographing aircraft professionally. Were you ever lucky enough to see it in action? Sadly, not. Mm. No. I I would have loved to. Um, but, you know, I see it when I land at Paris. There's yeah. the 
there's the, the uh, yeah. Concord yeah. there, and then yeah. there's the one at Heathrow. So now, uh, well, I'm, I'm intrigued to know. I mean, I'm, I'm, allow me the geeky question, since since we're geeking together here. But mine's going to be of a pho- mine's going to be a photography one. I was all, all, all already fascinated by the fact you must shine all these lights through the windows. Uh, the man that has the most amount of speed lights of any photographer I know, <laughs> I'm sure. Well, what do you what do you photograph with? Depends. I have a Nikon uh, D850. Okay. But then if I'm doing media format, then I have a Fuji. Oh, right. Okay, so you yeah. use GFX? Yeah. Now, one thing I did I did notice, and um, I spotted you do merch, Led. You have a range of clothing called, and I yeah. like this, this is inspired, very plain clothes. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, if you can't, well, nowadays, if you can't travel, you know, wear the 747. So it's all of my photos, uh, well, not all of them, but a number of fo- my photos that have been transposed onto cloth and, and as, as, as clothing. So I've got T-shirts, sweatshirts, um, images of abstracted photos of mm. planes as, as clothing. And, and does that do well for you? Is it a nice side of the business? Yeah, it's done very well. Uh, it was actually stocked at, before Colette went out of, uh, closed down rather, uh, it was stocked at Colette in Paris and right. sold out a couple of times. Right. So it's been, it's been quite good to have it. I'm just rejigging it now, putting in some new items, because, of course, you have to change it up every now and then. So new collection coming out soon. Stay tuned. Mm. I, I guess you're very much the poster boy for doing what you passionately believe in. I know huge parts of what you photograph uh, don't happen with as much frequency uh, as you would like at the moment. But, but what advice do you have for photographers who think, hmm, quite fancy that, bit niche. Nobody's ever going to be interested. Oh, I think there's if the, the future is in niche business, niche photography, because clients will always want the, the have the oddest requests for, you know, I need food photography, but I only take pictures of X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, I think do what you love and, and follow that. Uh, and it will show through your photos. Mm. Uh, if you're passionate about something, it'll show through the lens, uh, whatever it may be, be it food, planes, product. Since you mentioned passion, I did want to end actually with, uh, I'm going to ask you to really think hard about this one. That one moment that for you, I think you may have said it uh, with that example of all that light coming in through one side of the aircraft and a view that you'd never ever get because all the seats were removed. But I'll ask you to try and find another one. That one moment where you look at it and think, Laird, I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, probably the the scariest experience last summer was doing the photo shoot and I'm afraid of heights. It's it's crazy as a Sorry, as a say aviation that, photographer. Say that again. You're yeah. afraid of heights. Yeah, I don't like heights. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> um, which is strange. But being in a cherry picker, uh, 30 meters above an A380, um, and with the wind going, so it's slightly wobbling. Yeah. And um, changing lenses while being directly over a 500 million dollar piece of machinery. <laughs> Was is gobsmacking. It, I just took the photos and had a great time doing it. Tried to forget where I was, um, but as soon as I got onto the ground, I was very happy. Mm. But the, the the result was a spectacular image, um, and I'm just happy with that. And there's a view that yeah, I don't think many people will will get. Laird K. Tuesday tomorrow. Niall Carson is back, and of the stories he recounts about news photojournalism. He remembers being the wrong side of a shamed politician's angst. I could just see the fist coming into a ball and, 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 and then the next thing, bang, a big punch in the head. A big thank you once again to MPB.com, trading thousands of cameras and lenses every week across Europe and the US. They're our partner this month, helping to spread the word to other photographers. Music on the show was from Artlist.io, and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you, and talking with you tomorrow. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.